In order to explain F1 to people who don't understand it, you have to make strange connections, and for me it's phone companies, Mercedes or Apple, barely putting a foot wrong and love just because everyone else does. Okay, that's a bit harsh, but you get what I'm trying to say. Red Bull would be Samsung, Racing Point would be one of those Chinese fake companies, Williams would be Nokia, and so on. The point I'm trying to make is that technology is always evolving, and you can never stop looking for ways to improve it. The same applies to F1, with cars getting that little bit faster every single year. That is, of course, unless you're Ferrari. For Ferrari, it's been more like moving from an iPhone to a Windows phone. Everything still works the same, it's just a bit worse. Now, whatever's gone wrong for the Scuderia, from an outsider's perspective, it seems they should just dig their old phone out their underwear drawer and just upgrade it a bit. If only it were that simple. It strikes me that a team with this much money and talent should be walking all over the rest of the field, but Ferrari have continued to produce subpar race cars year after year, and there has to be a genuine reason for that. Sadly for Ferrari, there's far more than just a simple explanation as to why they're so rubbish. But as always, I'll do my best to explain what went wrong for Ferrari. First and foremost, we have arguably the biggest problem of them all, Mattia Bonotto. From the outside, he seems like the perfect team principal. Having worked for Ferrari since 1995, he'd be an ideal candidate to manage the Scuderia. Right? Before Bonotto was appointed as team principal of Ferrari, he was the chief technical officer of Ferrari, and if I may say so, he was doing a fairly solid job. Under the all-powerful reign of ex-team principal Maurizio Arriva Beni, soon to be dubbed Departa Beni for obvious reasons, the Italian outfit were running like a well-oiled machine. Binotto's expertise in the team led to him being able to develop exactly the car that Ferrari wanted, and consistently challenge for wins and podiums. In 2018, the final year of Binotto being the chief technical officer of Ferrari, lead driver Sebastian Vettel was firmly cemented in the championship fight with Mercedes Lewis Hamilton. Okay, that's a little far from the truth, but it can't be argued that Vettel didn't have a chance that year. While we're on the subject of Sebastian Vettel, we might as well discuss his role in the downfall of Ferrari. While the Spinala memes exaggerate the issue that Vettel has in the Ferrari car, it's safe to say that he hasn't had the smoothest of starts to 2020. Granted, this second incident wasn't in any way his fault, but it's not hard to understand that a four-time world champion shouldn't be making these mistakes, especially given that he's driving for such a prestigious team. Moving swiftly back to Binotto, let's talk about his role in the team now. As well as having to play a key part in designing the Ferrari car every year, Binotto has to assume the role of team principal as well. This hybrid approach to running a team has led to both sides of Binotto's job not being done to the highest possible standard. Just as an example, have a look at Ferrari's appalling strategy choice in Bahrain last year. Leclerc's pace was outstanding, but a poor pit strategy led to Leclerc having a potential maiden win snatched from him like an ice cream from a baby. Now, don't get me wrong, our boy Spinotto seems like a great guy, but he just doesn't strike me as team principal material. Now, let's move on from poor old Mattia now, shall we? The next part of Ferrari's failure comes down to their entire philosophy. Enzo Ferrari once famously said, Aerodynamics are for people who can't build engines, and to this day the Scuderia have kept their founder's word, favouring a high power output and top speed instead of g-force and any other factors that might stray from Enzo Ferrari's word. This was all well and good until it surfaced that Ferrari might not have been abiding by the rules when it came to engines. To help me explain this, I've enlisted the help of fellow YouTuber Moto Meerkat. Thank you, JW. So yeah, it seemed a little bit fishy when Ferrari went from getting two pole positions and zero wins before the summer break in 2019 to four pole positions and three wins in the first four races after the summer break. And this sudden rise in overall pace caused quite a lot of people to turn their heads. Few actually questioned the legality of the car because they were just happy to see someone actually take on Merck at the front of the grid. And we would have to wait until later on in the season when teams would finally begin to eject to Ferrari's engines publicly. On October 17th, it was announced that multiple Formula 1 teams had written to the FIA for clarity over the legality of design aspects that gave Ferrari up to 8 tenths of a second per lap at some tracks. And that increasement in pace was described as ludicrous by one high-level team source. And I'm not talking tomato ketchup. That was off the noggin, mate, that joke. That was a good one. And thanks to this public uproar from the teams, the FIA clarified that they would indeed investigate the Ferrari engine further. But then the season 
ended with obviously Mercedes taking another constructors and drivers title with Lewis Hamilton. And the whole Ferrari situation sort of just went a bit silent. But after the off season, F1 came back for winter testing, still without any answers on the Ferrari engine. And it would take the FIA until 15 minutes before the end of the final session of the final week of winter testing to finally release their verdict that proved very unpopular. Now, did the FIA release it at a time that was strategically done to avoid the media frenzy because they knew everyone would be going home that evening? We can only speculate. But they ended up coming to the conclusion that although they had suspicions that the Ferrari engine was not always legal in 2019, they couldn't actually prove it. And thus, Ferrari would see no public reprimand for the possible cheating. The FIA stated, to avoid the negative consequences that a long litigation would entail, especially in light of the uncertainty of the outcome of such litigations, and in the best interest of the championship and of its stakeholders, the FIA, in compliance with Article 4 of its judicial and disciplinary rules, decided to enter into an effective and dissuasive settlement agreement with Ferrari to terminate its proceedings. Seeing this as a complete breach of the fairness of the sport, seven teams immediately wrote further letters to the FIA demanding answers to a series of questions on the Ferrari engine controversy. Now these teams that decided to write these letters were Mercedes, Red Bull, McLaren, Renault, Racing Point, Alpha Tauri and Williams. Funnily enough, the only teams that don't use Ferrari engines. And many people believe that Ferrari were getting special treatment because the current president of the FIA, Jean Todd, was previously the team principal for Ferrari and that they may have been sort of given a backhanded deal with Ferrari to keep the cheating all hush hush. But to this day, there still hasn't really been any public conclusion to this situation, as the FIA say they can't release any information without Ferrari's consent, and obviously, Ferrari aren't going to give consent, are they? And to further fan the flames of suspicion, since the implementation of stricter engine rules was put in place by the FIA to stop such a situation from occurring. Again, Ferrari have now become the fifth fastest team in 2020. So what do you reckon? Were Ferrari cheating? Be sure to let us know down in JW's comment section. But yeah, I'll hand it straight back to him now. Thanks for having me on the channel, mate. Dab dab. Couldn't have put it better myself. Now, as you can see, solving Ferrari's problems won't just happen by firing Mattia Bonotto, will it? That's all the main problems that Ferrari faced this year. At least, I hope so for their sake. And now I'll hand over to another YouTuber, Triple Crown Racing, to summarise everything we've just said and add a few opinions of his own. Hello everybody and thank you so much JW for having me on the channel. Obviously I've been invited to talk about why I think Ferrari are suddenly very rubbish. As in, more rubbish than they usually are when they are particularly rubbish. As a team, Ferrari can be incredibly erratic, but 2020 seems to be a particularly poor year for the Scuderia. Now, after doing some research, I have narrowed it down to some factors that I believe are really hurting them. Strangely, however, the factors mainly relate to straight line speed, which isn't an issue that you'd normally expect from Ferrari. First of all, their aero package isn't very good. Ferrari went for a new approach this year, hoping to improve aerodynamic grip through the corners, which is an area in which last year's aero package was reportedly lacking. However, it seems that it has gone a bit wrong, because not only is the car even slower through the corners, it's now 7 tenths slower than it was on the straights. Furthermore, the new SF1000 was the slowest through the speed traps at the Austrian Grand Prix by far. Secondly, there's also been some new engine regs introduced for this year. This year, the use of additive oils has been limited, and a second fuel flow sensor has been added. These engine regs clearly have not benefited Ferrari or any of their customer teams, as they are slower across the board. However, these regs were introduced for everybody. Which brings me to my final point. In light of what we've seen in the opening races, I don't think Ferrari's engine from last year was legal. And I think a lot of people can agree on that. There was some controversy last year in regards to the legality of Ferrari's engine, and it just so happened that once people started questioning that legality, they suddenly dropped off significantly in pace. And it's not just the factory cars either. Every single Ferrari powered car is slower than it was last year. And it just so happens to directly coincide with suspicions that Ferrari were cheating. How does Ferrari go from having one of the best engines on the grid 
to possibly the worst. It seems like too much of a, con a coincidence for me, and the combination of poor straight line speed and a poor car in general, as well as an unmotivated first driver and a second driver that made a significant mistake at the Steiermark Grand Prix, it's shaping up to be a pretty terrible year for Ferrari, but hopefully, and this may be wishful thinking, they'll turn it around. Anyway, that's my two cents on the issue. Thank you, JW, for having me on. And there you have it, your three favorite YouTubers all in one video. Aren't you lucky? I've put links in the description to Triple Crown Racing and Moto Meerkat's channels, so be sure to drop them a sub before you go. I'm sure it goes without saying now that I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, then like it and subscribe if you aren't already. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.